That's criticism of a government minister for describing a report into the death of a four-year-old boy in Bradford as rubbish. Children's Minister Tim Simpson made the comments after a serious case review into Hamza Khan's death was published. He was starved to death by his mother, and the report said that could not have been predicted. But Bradford East MP David Ward says officials in the city have been unfairly attacked. Michael Gove this week had a go at Bradford schools. He also had a go at social workers at a conference, um, so there's a culture within the department. But uh, this is too big a, an, an issue to be a political one. It's a serious issue that needs to be dealt with. And I am somewhat disappointed with the rapid response from the Minister. And you can hear more from David Ward, by the way, in the next 15 minutes. At the heart of West Yorkshire, Georgie Spanswick, BBC Radio Leeds. Coming up to seven minutes past seven, it's Georgie Spanswick on Breakfast. It's Thursday Breakfast. And yesterday, we talked a lot about this, the serious case review into the death of four-year-old Hamza Khan. A shocking story and one that we don't want to happen again. So we have a report drawn up. Um, independent report, which finds that no one is to blame for this young boy's death. It does, however, say that Hamza Khan's death would not have been predicted by the authorities and none of the systems in place were to blame. Well, our reporter Tracy G is in Bradford this morning. Uh, Good morning, Tracy. Tell me, why the need for this review in the first place? Well, good morning to you, Georgie. It certainly was a gruesome and sickening case that a four-year-old Hamza Khan, whose mummified remains were found at his home in Bradford in 2011. He starved to death. He was fed on scraps, kept in a darkened room with the door closed, and slowly he withered away until he died in 2009. His body was found 21 months later. Now, last month, his mum, Amanda Hutton, was jailed for 15 years. So, yesterday, we had the publication of the series case review. What were the main points that came out of that? Well, Georgie, as ever, with any review of a serious case like this one, there's a focus on whether there's a person or an agency who failed in what they were supposed to do and whether that led to the death of a child or at least was partially responsible. Now, this review was very clear. It said that Hamza's death could not have been predicted and, in fact, that the little boy was let down by systems as opposed to the likes of social workers and healthcare workers. This is Professor Nick Frost. He's the chairman of Bradford Safeguard in Children's Board and he says there's no way of guaranteeing that this won't happen again. Arguably the safeguarding system in this country is working very well but it's a big leap so you can absolutely guarantee that and in a family like this that we're off the radar there may be other families off the radar by definition that's impossible to define so no one can stand here in good faith and say that this will never happen again. I can stand here in good faith and say that the agencies here are doing all in their powers to make sure Uh, that as far as they can, that that this isn't repeated. Professor Nick Foss there, the chairman of the Bradford Safeguarding Children's Board. But, Georgie, the report has been heavily criticised by the children's minister, Edward Timpson. He says that it doesn't explain why chances to protect Hamza were missed and that it fails to highlight that social, what social workers did when they knew that there were problems in the first place. Now, we just heard Professor Nick Frost talking about this family being off the radar. Many people will hear that and wonder how on earth that can actually happen, Tracy. Yeah, absolutely right. And that's something that indeed surprised the NSPCC as well. David Tucker from the charity said, and I'll quote this, I have never heard before in a serious case review of a child being so completely lost. Hamza wasn't taken to routine appointments or immunisations. His birth wasn't registered and he wasn't taken to the midwife. He effectively became invisible. This was happening despite social services knowing that Hamza's mother, Amanda Hutton, had serious problems of her own. This is Chris Cloak from the NSPCC who said the alarm bells should ring sooner for any health professionals who comes into contact with a parent who's struggling. We know that Hamza's mother had real problems, alcohol, domestic violence, mental health problems. What the NSPCC wants to see happen is really for adult services to really consider the needs of children. And this doesn't always happen. So when adult services, professionals working in adult services, see a mother who has these problems, they should think, is there a child involved? How can we make sure that child is protected? Because these are real warning signs. 
the NSPCC there and Chris Cloak speaking. And what many individuals have been quick to point out, Georgie, is that the real culprit here is, of course, Amanda Hutton, Hamza's mum. She effectively kept Hamza hidden from social and healthcare services. Bernard Gallagher is a child protection expert at University of Huddersfield, and he's spoken out about this. He says it may well have simply been impossible to prevent the death of Hamza. Tracy G, thank you very much this morning, live from Bradford for us. Well, let's now talk to MP for Bradford East, David Ward. Uh, good morning, David. Um, good morning, David. What do you make of this serious case review? Well, I, th- I think it, it was uh, a good report in that it was comprehensive. It uh, identified and spoke to all the various agencies involved and got their perspective on it. It's certainly not a whitewash. Uh, there are too many people, I suspect, haven't read the full report who were jumping to uh, knee-jerk reactions. Um, but uh, it's a, it was a, a good piece of work in that it uh, comprehensively covered all the agencies involved. But um, we have spent the money on a report that no one is accountable apart from the mother, who clearly was suffering herself, David. Well, it isn't, and I'm a bit sickened to see the father, I must say, on TV, uh, saying how much uh, you know he's lost a son. Well, where did he think his son was for the two years after he died? Uh, and, and everybody's saying one person's in, one person's responsible for this, but I put the blame squarely on the shoulders of, of a, an inept and abusive father and husband who um, drove mean- a woman into mental health issues and uh, and into alcoholism. He was restricted from um, seeing the family, we know that. So Why? Because of his behaviour. Absolutely. You're, yes, as you quite rightly say. Do you think it points to a problem in the system? Because when so many authorities, the, the councils, the police, the NHS, the health workers, are involved with a family, um, they have quite clearly slipped through that net. Yes, I think what this will show people who aren't aware is just the vast number of dysfunctional families that the the services have to deal with. Health, the police, uh, social workers, of course, education system. And many of those in their individual incidents and situations will appear to be far, far worse than this case. Now, everybody at the end of the day looks back and said, well, why didn't anybody see something? But there is a difference, of course, between universal services that are available to people and compulsory services. And many of the points that people are making about services, uh, whether it's to do with immunisation, 10% of families don't uh, immunise for all personal reasons. They don't want to. So what do we do? Have an investigation against every one of those. The incidents of of, um, uh, cruelty against the children, it was the father, running away from the father that created that. The protection that uh, the multi-agency meetings were about protecting the mother from the father. Uh, So each of the areas you look at, in in 35 years, Professor Frost said he'd never come across anything like this. Uh, And it was a bit of a a freak situation with an appalling consequence for Hamza. I'm looking at a quote from the children's minister, Edward Timpson, who says he has deep concerns about serious case review. It fails to explain sufficiently clearly the actions taken, and this is quite important, or not taken by children's social care. They're aware of this woman, and yet nobody persists with this, David. Why? All the incidents took place over a long, long period of time. And you will have families that are referred almost every other week as school reporting incidents, negligence, or uh, maybe uh, abuse against a child. They are dealt with as promptly as they possibly can be. But when you look at the incidents straight over, spread over a long period of time, it's so easy to look back and say, well, why couldn't... I think the use of the word not predicted was unfortunate, um, that this thing couldn't be predicted, because what many people out there are saying is any fool could have seen the dangers, but only if they'd seen all of them and only if they knew where it had ended up. David, we've spent all this money on this report. What happens now? No one's accountable. Well, so what do we do? There, it, it, will there be another well, Hamza Khan? Accountable, Georgia, the, the, point, the point that is being made um, is that not that no one's accountable. The answer is we are all accountable for it. But also don't forget, because of the serious case reviews on other tragic cases, it's now four years since this poor child died. And a lot of things have happened and changed since then. And it's hard to believe that this could happen now because of the improvements in multi-agency work. The fact that the doctor, as an example, the fact that there was removed from the doctor's register without the child being seen is unlikely to happen now. It could not happen. Uh, so there have been a number of changes. 
uh, Professor Eileen Munro, all the work that she's done in the last few years, came before the Education Select Committee and, and pointed out the, the importance of actually talking to children, listening to children and finding out from them their perspective rather than looking at, uh, at adults. All of these things are lessons that we have already learned as a result of other tragic cases. I think what's so awful is there is a woman in prison here that may just disappear into that prison sentence and, and system and may not receive the help that she, I think, clearly needs. Well, the other thing about it, uh, in terms of the review, of course, uh, and this couldn't be forced, is that Amanda Hutton didn't contribute despite being asked. Now, what we need to know is what happened. The other children were not always uh, well looked after, but were attending school presumably, I don't know, getting school meals, um, but were, they were attending school, sometimes looked neglected, but other times appeared in new clothes. Again, there was nothing which in itself, on its own, triggered the threshold, at threshold level, said, what is going wrong here? Now, that has been largely addressed by changes in the system as a result of other serious case reviews, um, but nothing in itself, as an isolated incident, uh, was enough to reach that threshold. Uh, David Ward, many thanks for joining me this morning. MP for Bradford East.